Okay, we're going to go to the meeting. Uh, we have a substantial board meeting. We have a special board meeting that's called to address uh, grievance on the file. Uh, we have an agenda. And um, we'll go right into there. what the process will be. We're going to have ground rules. Um, there will be some comment period. Um, people should stay respectful. People should stay on topic and should stop from personally attacking any people um, or issuing any threats. Um, if anybody does those things, we will you will get one warning from the chair or vice chair, and then after that you will be asked to leave. And then uh, we are recording, and uh, please limit uh, questions or anything of that. Uh, at, well, there won't be a question period, there will be comment periods. Uh, please limit it to those periods, and please don't talk about board or let's get through this. So, um, for re the records, we are recording. We are recording it. Um, the process after the initial review uh, is we reviewed it. There were three grievances that would be outside of, of the criteria for filing grievances, uh, which were the 45 days staying in the class, article violated uh, remedies, and harm. So, uh, we move forward with three to the next step, which is the grievance committee, which will be this board meeting, uh, where the grievance has a chance to present any relevant evidence. Uh, we have allocated uh, 15 minutes for comments from the grievance, and um, so um, the process from that, after that, we will assign a report writer. Uh, that report writer will, or writers will present to another board meeting to vote on the findings. Uh, if it's sustained, uh, if any of the grievances are sustained, the board will work with uh, the grievances uh, to come up with some solutions on how to move forward. Um, so, uh, is there any objections on the agenda to move forward? No objections. Okay. All right. And then we will have 15 minutes uh, and we'll talk to the grievances. No. We'll present any relevant evidence. And yeah. on the three that are relevant, that were found to proceed, uh, yeah. the election committee having too many funds, okay. um, and being able to expend those funds up to, including the day of the election. Uh, the notice that was supposed to be given for the meeting, uh, and how that was sent out, and then the third one, how the elections were conducted by the elections committee in terms of uh, exercising the board. Ask them what your number is there. So, evidence related to those, okay. and any comments, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. You may. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you. Yes. Um, David, are you calling on me? I didn't see you look at me. I'm sorry, yes. Okay, uh -huh. thank you, thank you. Um, David, I'm pretty sick today, so um, I'm going to, I'm here. Um, I'm going to have Benjamin go ahead and start for me. As you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of grievance on this, uh, not just me, so I'm going to have him speak on my behalf. I'm pretty sick every day. I just wanted to, excuse me, please. No negative comments. What we are not discussing are decisions of the previous board beyond what the here in the three remaining grievances. We are not discussing Facebook discussions. We are not discussing communities discussions relating regarding the elections beyond official neighborhood documentation. And we are not taking questions from the grievance. You're just presenting any evidence or comments. So go ahead. Can you tell us specifically what uh, grievances are standing according to the board? Yeah, I, already, I said that. Uh, do you want the numbers? Yeah, just give us the numbers, numbers please. Number three, four, five. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Three, four, five. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, I'd like to start off just by saying um, I know that you mentioned that you won't allow discussion on other items, but the bylaws don't prohibit that, and unless the board has established a policy, um, you can't limit that, because the bylaws say I can present any information I'd like to. Um, I'd ask the board just to start off, you don't have to answer, but I'd ask um, when we were given written notice under Article X, um, Section 4, specifically if the proposed grievance is found not to meet the uh, board or designees, um, the criteria, um, the designee or committee will inform the grievance in writing this uh, determination and the reasons for the determination. It says if the proposed grievance is 
uh, met, is found to meet the criteria of the review process continues, which you guys have done. You're now at stage section five of the process, and we've not been given written notice, um, which is required by the bylaws in our due process. And I'd ask the chair um, to ask this member to get out of my face, because this is the exact- I second that. Yeah, yeah. This is ridiculous. Conduct not okay. In violation of board policy. Is it? Yes. yes. No, 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 I've been sitting there. No. It's also against party and rec. You moved rules. your chair about three feet and are staring at it. Can we just sit facing forward or turn around? Yeah. Yeah. I won't continue until this member is respectful and follows that. I just got flipped off by this person. That should be the second. That, that should be enough to get him out of here. Him? Do you want to get your wait, fucking wait, wait, shit wait, wait, off? Who never called me that again? Wait, 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 now, 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 Officially, I said them. We gotta report it to you. Okay. And I well, want to know that I was threatened all the way out. So. I'm going to. Maybe we should wait till. Um, Olivia's back. Or? Yeah. Yeah, Olivia. Yeah. I paused this a while. Okay. Okay, we'll take a brief break while that board member returns to the room. Excuse me. I'm just. I'm sorry that happened. I I wasn't gonna react. There's no point. Yeah. Let her hit me. Let her hit me, I'm a woman. <laughs> I would have. It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to call the police. If that person comes back, please call the police. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So again, we've, we've no, not... We're, we're just gonna, I just want to state while we're recording that people laughing is not okay. I'm yeah. completely terrified, and I think other well, people are That was pretty too. scary. It's not okay. It's not okay behavior. Well, this you, is why it's hard for us laughing. to show up. Well, These two members, again, in violation of... It's not it's funny. funny. It really it's is. Just, it's just... It's not. It's not. not, 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 it's not, not I'm going to be really clear. I was not laughing during the incident. The incident was over, and we were laughing... Why were you laughing? Well, but that's not Why were you laughing about the incident? Do you expect the code of conduct established by this board? You're being disrespectful. I don't know. If I, I, I think this person just admitted that they were laughing. Laughing about someone threatening somebody. I think this person needs to be removed as well. Olive has returned. I'm going to start the time back up. Be respectful. Resume. All right. So none of the grievance here have actually ever got any written notice required by the bylaws. You guys have continued the process without giving any written notice. So as far as we're concerned, the bylaws require you to now consider all of the grief violations because you did not give us due process by written notice. Is the chair going to allow all the grief violations or explain Please, why? You've got 15 minutes, go ahead. Okay. So we're going to three, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 I mean, you can present from the beginning if you want. Um, if they're not going to allow, we'll file another grievance on that then. Yeah. Um, if I may, it might be easier if you ask us questions. We took a lot of time to put together an entire document of 43 pages. Do you have any questions for us? Then, then why are you calling this meeting if you have no questions? For our bylaws, we have an opportunity to give you, we need to give you an opportunity to present more information. That's what the bylaws say, so that's what we're working on. The bylaws say that a committee is supposed to do that. Have you guys appointed a committee? We're working as the full board. It says the board or our designated committee. Has the board voted to do that? When, when was when, that voted on? When was that vote, voted on? Vote didn't vote to form a committee. Okay, okay, then you're out of bylaws. Bylaws. Okay. Okay. You're wasting all of your time on voting that is in the On yet another grievance that, that, we'll, that we'll prepare later. Okay. That's not what we're talking about. So by, violation number three, um, essentially uh, the board established a committee in violation of the bylaws. Um, the bylaws require all members to be appointed in a public meeting. You did not do that. They were, none of the members were publicly disclosed. Um, it's required by the bylaws. It's required by state law. You also gave that committee board authority, which means they must have public meetings announced to the public. 
Again, that committee didn't do that. So the decisions of that committee are, you know, one, it violates the bylaws. Two, there's no public announcement, so that violates the bylaws. And any members that were on it were not appointed, so it's not an actual committee. Um, and we've requested records around that committee, and to date, the board has refused to provide us um, those records. I think the secretary specifically said that she will not follow by the bylaws of this organization or state law, publicly recorded in two meetings ago. Sorry, which records were those? Um, we requested the minutes of the meeting, the composition, as in the members, and any decisions made, and we've not been provided them. Specifically, the secretary which, told us. Sorry, which request? Can we keep the, can we keep I'm sorry. I'm just sure she's, no, she's trying to backfire. Everything we have. The elections so committee. No, we haven't been provided everything you guys have. No, the secretary in emails we have have specifically said that she was going to redact information and hide it. We have those emails. Go on, go on, go on. Okay. Um, what's your phone number? Violation number four. Um, for election notices, you have to mail all members. Um, most members of this association did not receive any direct mail notice. Um, who here, any members or grievance, did receive direct mail notice? Just to know. If you could raise your hand so the board knows. I have Huh? Okay, those, those who have not, those, those who did not receive notice by U.S. mail, please raise your hands. Just so, yeah. We also requested a copy of a list of who was mailed. That was denied us by the secretary. That violates um, the bylaws and the only standards that's covered in our grievance. So violation number five specifically, um, the committee that was established violate, violated the elections portion of the bylaws. The committee is actually supposed to report back to the board. <clears throat> um, it says right here, um, that basically, yeah, the, the board is supposed to prepare an election plan and report it back to the board and the board is supposed to affirm it. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Uh, Jonathan, you're wanted outside. Jonathan? <laughs> I, I just John? Is that? <laughs> oh. Yes, so, so violation six, um, uh, the secretary introduced a, a resolution to the board um, in violation of the conflict of interest provisions of the, of the bylaws, specifically um, members who get paid or receive money or propose that they're gonna get some kind of financial gain are not allowed to participate in discussion or vote on items where there's a conflict of interest. The board itself also has a duty to enforce the conflict of interest provisions. I think only one board member, I think it was Antigonus, um, who mentioned this, and I believe Brad, before he was a board member, maybe not. If a board member or two did raise issue with the conflict of interest and the board still allowed um, the secretary to bring up with the conflict of interest provision. Um, furthermore, that conflict of interest provision um, afforded payment to the secretary for performing her volunteer duties and also restricted records being provided to members which contradicts both state law and the bylaws and other standards. So all that was done and packed into a resolution um, that should never have been voted on and was done or discussed, um, but the board allowed it, passed it. It's still as of today in effect because the board hasn't rescinded it. Wasn't that why you were on the board though? What? Wasn't the homeless resolution? And so that really covers all of them. Um, we're asking for a new election, and we're asking for the other remedy sought. Um, our plan, just so the board is aware, is to see your outcome, take it to South and South Cliff, take it to the city. But if you guys don't have a favorable result in this, would you plan to bring a Derivative suit under OR665 for all these violations of state law, bylaw, and the only standards, and have a court um, 
issue an injunction order um, and demand a, a new election, which we believe the court will because there's been significant violation of their ordinary by statute. Now I'm continuing. Now I'm continuing to the state. This meeting has an example of what's called um, in violation of bylaws, which says general meetings will be on the second Monday of the month unless the board votes to do it at a different date, which the board did not. This is not a membership meeting, it's a board it's, meeting. All board meetings and general membership meetings are only on the second Monday of the month per the bylaws. I know. <laughs> Here's a copy if anybody would like to write it. It's on the second page. It says the board must vote if you guys choose a different time. You guys didn't. Um, so this meeting itself was called a violation of bylaws. And, and that's all we have. And I, I just, I guess one last comment is I, I would advise the board under OR 65, when you guys intentionally violate the bylaws, and you're knowing we do so, which we've reminded you time and time again of these violations via email, you lose protection under law, which means you cannot use the finances of the association to defend yourself. If we sue you for slander, you'd have to pay out of your pocket. And there's 59 of us, 59 households in this neighborhood, um, over 100 more were interested, but we wanted to narrow it to like 50, 60. Um, with some significant financial capital that we lost against this board. You can in your head, like, I, I guess, why did, you, why did you run for this board if you're not going to follow the bylaws? It's about the legal procedures. You and guys have no it's respect? It's not about any personal vendettas. It's about legal procedure. You're yeah. the represent neighborhood, you need to follow the legal Now, you realize this meeting and the subsequent one are in regard to the grievance. That's correct. And it's sort of a special meeting. It's not just a regular it's not meeting. Announced. It was not announced as a special meeting. It has to be announced under state law. And it specifically was a general board meeting announced on the website. She did. It was announced as a board meeting. She did. Okay. Are you done? Yeah. 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 It's not an emergency board meeting. It's an actual board meeting. It's just an actual board meeting. Okay. Well, that makes our grievance. <laughs> you just admitted to violating the violence. Are you surrendering this to John? Huh? Are you guys done? Yeah, I mean, it would have been great if you guys gave enough time for all of our agreements. Okay, great. Do we want to take any other invited comments? Questions from anything like that? Is there a question? Can I ask a question? All right. um, well, we're not taking questions. All we're doing is there are agreements that submitted. Any evidence, any comments or evidence uh, related to those, we'll take those, but we're not really taking comments. to, I think, violation three, um, which would be that um, we separately, before we filed an agreement with 60 people signing it, um, had asked for roles of people that registered at the election, their name and address, so that we could verify. We feel very strongly that there are people that live outside this neighborhood that were given the opportunity to vote, some of which we know. And we were asking for that list. We were told that there were a few people uh, meaning two or three, I have to check my notes, that were denied access, but everyone who came was able and officially in the neighborhood boundary to vote. Um, we'd like to verify that information, and we are allowed that information as neighborhood association members. Any documents within the neighborhood association, including email, sign-up sheets, or membership list, is available to the entire neighborhood. This is our neighborhood association. That has been denied. Uh, Evelyn Mack, who's sitting two people from me, has requested that at least 15 times via email. Um, and I feel that we are, I don't understand, I think it would be so easy to just turn over said information and clear this up since we appear to be so wrong based on the other side that disagrees with us. So that in itself causes me to believe very strongly that something was done that was in violation of ethics whenever it came to the election. Thank you. And I'll back up that when I checked in, I wrote my cross street down and asked if they wanted to see my ID to prove it, and told no, it's okay. So I feel strongly that there were several people who just wrote cross street down probably and voted, and it may not have been that okay. Also a copy of the membership policy so, if the board would like that. I'm in a great getting better. I have to say that I'm right there too. I <laughs> questioned Ralph about not wanting to see my 
and I was there when I heard somebody say, I'm just here to vote. I don't live in the neighborhood. That, that, that does concern me. I don't know who's in charge, but. I was also concerned by the fact that there was people presenting themselves as neighborhood association members camped out in front of the elections with a popcorn machine with very nice printed off pamphlets that proceed, made people who were going to election think that this was the neighborhood association with their specific candidates asking to be elected. Very well resourced people setting up with those pamphlets, going around signing people up, signing people so up. So he's not agreed that it's agreed at time oh, oh, I had agreed the election too, though. Tyler, on the record, I am the neighborhood association. Yes, we never are. went oh, here. Yes, I Tyler, too. I have you confirmed as a neighborhood association member. Yeah. No, I looked you up on Go very, ahead. very easy on Google, and you were not a neighborhood association. And it's really well, actually, you were actually the ice cream. Excuse me, excuse me. Wait, wait, wait.
the way we're not the election. Um, and I don't in any way think that our, our grievance isn't even new, really directly to the board so much it is to ONI as well. So that's a complaint that we have with ONI specifically, that specific problem. And, and I so don't necessarily mean to say- Which comments to the board? We don't want to start any okay. side sessions. Right. Okay, like and I don't, I don't necessarily mean to say that I would agree that people should be required to bring an ID to the neighborhood election. Um, I'm not saying that um, because I know that um, you know part of that was to that we agreed and um, or like I'll speak for myself now um, that somebody um, if they were willing to sign and vouch that they live at a particular address my role would be to look up that address and make sure it wasn't within the boundaries, which I did with everybody that I um, took in, and um, that that would also be inclusive to our hospital stager because I know um, that somebody would not necessarily have a, um, an ID. We didn't want to prevent somebody based on that. And another, I might be rambling a little bit, but. Um, one the last thought is that uh, in order to do that at an election, it, it definitely would have to be something that would be in place and, and um, advertised as such. So, yeah, that's the next one. Uh, what was the statement now? Or is that, um, well, that's your elections committee report in November. And that will pull out recommendations that the board can certainly take into consideration next time the elections come around. Which is probably only next few months, but uh, it starts forming on the steering committee, which I'm sure people are jumping at the opportunity to volunteer for. <laughs> hey, Ron, I'm just saying so there is such a policy uh, that's established in the process. Membership policy. Anyone else uh, want to talk Anybody wants to read it? It's the board of membership policy. <laughs>
Does anybody would like to talk? She's been patiently raising her hand. Oh, oh yes, please. I'd like to note that what was also confusing is in the lead up to the election, there was, I forget the exact timeline, but at one point it was said that you have to uh, show up at the prior uh, general meeting mm -hmm. uh, in order to be registered as a uh, member. Uh, and so one of my family members did that because he wasn't sure. I knew I was active. but. Um, yeah. And and people were then operating under the assumption that if they already were on the rolls, that they could come to the election. And then between that period of time, there was a change. And then anybody who showed up that night of the election was able to. And there was a time restriction placed, meaning that pe some people who were actually um, were on the rolls were not allowed to vote, but were given provisional ballots um, simply because of work they came late. So. So th that's just an additional wrinkle in the process, that the process, the, the requirements changed multiple times in the lead up to the election, which is also problematic. So I'm, I'll limit this to the Irish and also the final message. So I think this is part of the thing of that. I know. Yeah, this is that note. Um, I think this is the crux of it here, which is, um, I was under the impression because I came to the September meeting that you had to be at a board meeting with a core or a general group in order to vote. At that meeting, um, then the board voted that no, we could have this uh, special uh, general meeting before the election. So it was a decision made at that board meeting. But whether that, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that was right or wrong. It just happened. That's Kind of, kind of the crux of it, right there. Brent, can I ask you, yeah, have you seen the membership all There was a video of the November one. Again, in the bylaws? No, no, the no board, there's the board. The board, the board, the board, the board has policies outside the bylaws. I'm just wondering if they've like, seen it. I haven't I'll seen it. I'll get it right here. Okay, and thank you. None of the current people sitting on the board were on the board. That's not true. That's not true. Jonathan Ogden was on the board.
the same time. There's not the same time. I have an on point. I'm not doing this, anything. They haven't rented the space. The whole space is owned by Parkwood. That's what happened. She was very polite. Okay, I was very polite. All right, all right. I understand both of your guys' sites. Unfortunately, because they have rented the space, you have they to have leave. not paid. They rented the space. space. They Sounds are part of Portland Parks. I need to ask you to leave. We are part of Portland. I'm a member of the I need to ask you to leave. If you do not leave, I have to call the police. Let the police. You know what? Call the police, please. Okay. You don't want to do Would this. You like I don't want to. Do you can call it off. Maybe you let me sit up here. I will not leave. We are going to see you within 30 days. That's ridiculous. David, we will see you within 30 okay, days. Okay, you are now threatening. Okay, you are now I'm threatening you. I'm giving you a warning. As a member, I'm saying I will exercise my rights by the law. You are threatening. You are I'm not threatening. You're lying. You're lying. You're, lying. You're, lying. You're, lying. You're making things up and conflating the situation because you don't like the law. And you have one that appointment. Amanda, you should not be. You should You should respectfully resign. Is there anything that's going on right now? I only have one ear. I can't hear when multiple people are speaking. I, I, As a part of my disability, I need one person to speak at a time. Do we have any I totally respect that you're this. I'm sorry. I I would like for it to be taken in consideration of your ability to agree with us. That's all I have to do to remain unwanted at this point from the comment. No, no objections.
Think about the US so, I have, I'm a 35 year old mom of five, David. You gave me a single warning within your threat. I'm just asking you to follow the bylaws. So, yeah, let me set it up. Um, Susie has uh, come to us with a request for a donation to um, high school. They're having, they're having um, their auction, their annual auction. In the past, the board has supported the school, and um, Susie has made some really compelling arguments to me why it would be in our interest to continue to support it. Um, I had some reservations since we're, um, since I just don't know a lot about the history of what we're using our budget for, uh, but I would love for Susie to present. I am not a member of the Monville Neighborhood State Center because I have no paper, but my daughter, who's now 17, went to preschool right here. <laughs> So, um, and I shop, play, and do all my fun stuff. I'll start right there. Um, so, my name is Susie. I'm a parent of a senior at Franklin High School. And I am helping with the auction this year. This is my last year as a well, My daughter's a senior. And the Franklin High School auction is our primary fundraiser. We have two smaller fundraisers. But as a board, many years ago, we decided to not nickel the dime our families and our neighbors and our grandparents and our aunts and uncles and all that kind of stuff by having kids going out and selling pepperoni sticks, that sort of thing. So we decided to leverage all of our energy into one big fundraising. And we've been growing, increasingly successful. And Amanda said, why? Why should we support? Why should the board support um, not like sponsorship? That. And that's not like that. But she said, can you, can you give me more information? And I said, yeah, because partly, you know, neighborhoods and schools, are, we're, we're integral to one another. And we should be supporting each other. And I encourage all neighborhood associations. And I've, I've been to, I've been to all of them. Franklin is a big, um, you know, really large cluster that they serve. And, and Mata Villa in Lucas Lowe is actually shared with um, Madison High School. So you guys are one of the few neighborhood associations that can fully Franklin High School. So part of Mata Villa, part of Mata Villa, about 60% go to Franklin, about 40% go to Madison. And um, so she says this. I encourage the neighborhood associations too because our kids are so supportive. We have a lot of clubs and things like volunteer paint bases and all that kind of stuff. And it's been pretty, it's been, it's been fun for us. I say that too. So, what do we do with the money? We're 100% volunteer um, effort, and we, um, we actually have done volunteer in this room. <laughs> And so every even our option here is volunteer. And um, so and every money can be raised, we split it up 25 75. 25 percent goes to what's called the Franklin Foundation and is funneled through all nine raised. PTAs cannot pay for uh, FTE, they can't pay for personnel. So that's our way of giving um, money directly back to the principal to use it for discretion for staff. So the last couple of years she's used it to make our um, attendance person, not the person who makes phone calls. We have somebody who actually goes out to homes, 
works with kids and families that are just dropping out to for a um, to make him full time. And he's super effective. And the other 75% we keep and we give back to um, any student group, teacher, staff person can apply um, in the form of a grant. And we're getting better and better. I would say this year, I've never been on the giveaway end. I've always been on the fundraising end. And so it's really fun to be part of the giveaway and to see how it works and how, um, I don't know, Robin, you might know better well, than I do how well, long they've been going. Well, one of the things that I like is that it touches every aspect of the school, that because it is just a grant that, um, you know, it supports the drama department, it supports the science teachers, it supports so many different areas. So it's not an option where we just raise a bunch of money and we're making a scoreboard for the gym. Right. It really touches every part of the school, which then touches every student and what their activities are that they're interested in. So it's and nice that it's yeah. that way. And student groups, so an example of one of the grant I'm going to ask you sure question in a second. Oh, sure. One of, um, one of the things the student group are, um, we have a great dance club and the Asian mm -hmm. student um, Club. And they combined efforts with Tapano. They sponsored a uh, break dancing uh, for any PPS student. They did this break dancing thing on a Saturday morning, but they needed to pay for insurance. And they, they had some examples that they needed to pay for. The school can't pay for it on Saturday. It was very complicated. But that's the kind of stuff that we can pay for because we, we are following a slightly different liability umbrella than the school district. And it was super, it was really fun going like 40. I was just wondering um, if they're getting just like a lump sum grant and it does it go to like the individual school and then who decides so where the money decides to go at Franklin we take the money and then there's a grants committee that this year okay. because it's the first time I've actually been on that on that committee yeah, yeah. That there were about 15 parents um, but the process is actually a little bit different. So one of the things we do a lot better is we sit down with administration and we start at, we look through all the grants and say, hey, what should the school be paying for? What, what do they really have money to do? And our, our um, administrators, we have a really good team right now, and um, they're really good about saying, you know, we can pay for that, and we can probably pay for that. And this year there was like the new theater has these amazing um, like lights and stuff, but they needed two MacBooks to operate them. They didn't have them. Mm. So the principal's like, you know what, we got the MacBooks. The other thing we've gotten really good at is advocating with um, the, the intercollegiate athletic, um, the PIL. We used to get requests all the time for uniforms, and so PIL should be paying for this. So we've been gnawing on them for like the last three or three years. This is the first year we've not get a request from athletics. Mm. Like, they finally had the boys are getting their uniforms paid for. Them. Well, I know Madison. Um, three of my brothers ran for Madison, and I know for a long time they had the same uniforms that they had had for like 40 years or something. And there should be, so, and there, it should be rotating. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, some of these were getting on it. Yeah. And just yeah. advocating. That's my time is right now. Yeah. Okay. I, I just wanted to this all fantastic information and super interesting, and I'm just noticing. So yes. all of our time is running out. So the sponsorship levels um, start at two hundred and fifty dollars, and they're two hundred fifty dollars increments. We will take any donation. I also know you guys are a board. We have kind of a new board that's working for some stuff. So I get it. Um, but so that's my kids. If anybody has any questions, we appreciate any sponsorships. Two hundred fifty-five, two hundred seventy-five, one thousand. Um, you'll be noted, duly noted in our uh, catalog and. And people forget that because we have this shiny building and there's, you know, Franklin High School was the only high school last year to no. take it how we want it, U.S. News and World Reports, the top high school in the PPS, we were the only one, and there's great things going on Franklin, but people forget that we still have a lot of kids who are, you know, solidly working class, poor families, and this money goes to everybody, that's what we yeah, we totally are. I'm just going to say that regardless of any I encourage all the associations, and I've, I've been to, I've been to all of them. Franklin is a big, um, has a really large cluster serve, you know, that they serve, and 
And Montevilla, in full disclosure, is actually shared with um, Madison High School. So you guys are one of the few neighborhood associations that is in fully Franklin High School. So part, part of Montevilla is Part of Montevilla, about 60% go to Franklin, about 40% go to Madison. And um, so I encourage neighborhood associations too to use our kids as resources. Um, we have a lot of clubs and things that volunteer to paint faces and all that kind of stuff. And it's been pretty, it's, been, it's fun for, for, for I say our kids. So what do we do with the money? We're 100% volunteer um, effort and we, um, we actually have another volunteer in this room <laughs> who's helped us <laughs> um, at our auction. And so every, even our auctioneer is volunteer, believe it or not. And um, so at every money, penny we raise, we split it up 25-75. 25% goes to what's called the Franklin Foundation and is funneled through all hands raised. PTAs cannot pay for uh, FTE, they can't pay for personnel. So that's our way of giving um, money directly back to the principal to use at her discretion for staff. The last couple of years, she's used it to make our um, attendance person, not the person who makes the phone calls. We have somebody that actually goes out to homes, works with kids and families that are just dropping out for attendance um, to make him full time. And he's super effective. And the other 75% we keep and we give back to um, any student group, teacher, staff person can apply. Um, in the form of a grant, and we're getting better and better. I would say this year, I've never been on the giveaway end, I've always been on the fundraising end, and so it was really fun to be part of the giveaway end to see how it works and how, um, I don't know, Robin, you might know better well, than I do how well, long they've been Well, one of the things that I like is that it touches every aspect of the school. Uh, because it is just a grant that, um, you know, it supports the drama department, it supports the science teachers, it supports so many different areas. So it's not an option where we just raise a bunch of money and we're making a scoreboard for the gym. Right. It really touches every part of the school, which then touches every student and what their activities are that they're interested in. So it's and nice that it's yeah. that way. And student groups, so an example of one of the grants, oh, to ask your question just a second. Oh, sure. One of the, um, one of the things the student group are, uh, we have a break dance club and an Asian mm -hmm. student um, Club. And they combined efforts went to Pano. They sponsored a uh, break dancing uh, for any PPS student. They did this break dancing thing on a Saturday morning, but they needed to pay for insurance. And they, they had some incidentals that they needed to pay for. The school can't pay for it because it's on Saturday. It was very complicated. But that's the kind of stuff that we can pay for because we, we, are, we follow for a slightly different liability umbrella than the school district. And it was super, it was really fun, like 40 Great dancers, yeah, no one got hurt, they've been in. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. Sorry. Yeah. I was just wondering uh, if they're getting just like a lump sum grant, because it goes like an individual school, and then who decides so, where the money decides to go? At Franklin, we take the money, and then we, there's a grants committee that this year, because it's the first time I've actually been on, a, on that getting to do that part, there were about 15 parents. Um, but the process is actually a little bit different. So one of the things we do a lot better is we sit down with administration and we start at, we look through all of the grants and we say, okay, what should the school be paying for? What, what do they really have money to do? And our, our um, administrators, we have a really good team right now. And um, they're really good about saying, you know, we can pay for that and we could probably pay for that. And this year there was like the new theater has these amazing um, like lights and stuff, but they needed two MacBooks to operate them. They didn't have them. Like, so the principal's like, you know what, we got the MacBooks. The other thing we've gotten really good at is advocating with um, the, the Intercollegiate Athletic um, the PIL. We used to get requests all the time for uniforms. And, it's like, PIL should be paying for this. So we've been gnawing on them for like the last three or four years. This is the first year we did not get a request from athletics because their girls and boys are getting their uniforms paid for. And I know Madison, um, three of my daughters. And there should be on a rotation. EIL is on a rotation. <laughs> and for some reason, some new teams were getting on it. Yeah. And just yeah. advocating as my time is right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I just wanted to wait. This is all fantastic information and super interesting. And I'm just noticing that it is 130. And so yes. all of our time is running out. So sponsorship levels um, start at $250. 
and they're two hundred fifty dollar increments. We will take any donation. I also know you guys are a board, you know, kind of a new board that's working through some stuff. So I get it. Um, but so that's my pitch. If anybody has any other questions, we we appreciate any sponsorship. Two hundred fifty, five hundred, seven fifty, one thousand. Um, you'll be noted, duly noted in our uh, catalog, and the bigger the sponsorship, the bigger you're noted. Of course. Um, <laughs> Or reduce lunch, and people forget that because we have this shiny new building and this. You know, Franklin High School was the only high school last year to make take it how you want it. U.S. News and World Reports top high school in PPS. We were the only one, and there's great things going on, Franklin. But people forget that we still have a lot of kids who are, you know, solidly working class and poor families, and this money goes to help everybody. And that's the goal. Yeah, we totally are Taiwan. Yeah, everybody is free, free breakfast. Um, I was going to say that regardless of uh, any amount of aid that we can give, I think that the students also do that. And make sure that the other people know the function of it. Yes, and it's actually a pretty fun night. <laughs> I think I should share last year. I always have a question. For $1,000, can we get the DVD? You know, uh, for a thousand dollars, I don't know what DVD you want, but I'll make something for you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, we still have data. Well, and I think it's okay. Um, so I would move to, uh, to support Franklin High School at the same level that we did last year, two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, <laughs>
everything else okay? It should be okay. We're almost done actually. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And as a constant thing, um, yeah. as people who are thinking about it from a large discussion, um, it's a constant battle working with the members of the community throughout the day, making sure that we have contact information to people, and then coordinating and getting information out to people. And also, I'm serious, it's always complicated, but we do the best we can. I know. And also, Everybody's trying to Sounds like you need volunteers. We need volunteers. I volunteer. I've been nervous. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Oh, yeah.